Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the AB Calculus 5.2 Part 2 Homework Solutions on Antiderivatives Part 2, taking antiderivatives with linear inner functions. With this antiderivative, we notice that we have a linear expression inside something that we do know the antiderivative of. We know that the antiderivative of secant squared is tan, um, so we're going to make this 1 over 2 tan of 1 third x plus 2, and then since this is linear, we'll just divide by its derivative, divide by 1 third. Um, so that's really the same as multiplying by 3, which means we have a grand total of 3 tan 1 third x plus 2, all over 2, plus c. On this problem, this is essentially 1 eighth times cosecant squared of all this stuff. Um, so the antiderivative of just cosecant squared of something would be negative cotan of the something. But since this something has a derivative that's not just 1, we're going to divide by the tail here. Since it's just a linear function in here, we can just divide by the derivative, which is going to be 4 we're dividing by. Um, so we're going to have, this is going to be negative 1 over, let's see, 8 times 4 is 32 cotan of 4x minus 5 plus c. On this problem, taking this antiderivative, this is essentially a 1 over x kind of situation. It's a, number, a constant over something linear. So we can use ln to take the antiderivative. Um, but we can't just write ln of absolute value 5x plus 7 plus c. That's pretty close to the answer. But since the stuff inside the ln here is a linear function, we have to divide by the derivative of this, divide by 5. So we're actually going to end up with 1 fifth ln of absolute value of the denominator plus c. For number 4, we have this antiderivative of negative cosecant 1 6x times cotan of 1 6x dx. This fits the general pattern of negative cosecant cotan, whose antiderivative is just cosecant. Um, so to account for this 1 6th inside, since it's linear, we can just take the tail of this thing and divide our antiderivative by that. Um, so we're dividing by 1 over 6 to compensate for this 1 over 6 inside. That'll give us 6 cosecant of 1 over 6x plus c. For this problem, we'd love to use the ln function to take the antiderivative here. But since I have a linear uh, argument to that ln function, I, can, I have to divide by the, the derivative of this thing. So I'm going to have 8 ln of absolute value 4 minus 7x all of that divided by negative 7. Uh, so that's actually going to be negative 8 sevenths ln of this stuff in absolute value plus c. For number 6, we have antiderivative of 1 over 3x minus 9. This fits the general pattern of 1 over something with an x. And we need ln for that antiderivative. But if we do ln of absolute value of 3x minus 9, the inner function here has a tail of 3, derivative of 3x. Um, so we have to divide by that. So then we're going to get a grand total of 1 third ln absolute value 3x minus 9 plus c. For this problem, we want the antiderivative of this exponential function. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we can write this as 6e to the negative 1 fourth x, but then we have to multiply by the reciprocal of that inner linear tail. Uh, so we're really multiplying by negative 4, the reciprocal of negative 1 fourth, which is going to end up giving us negative 24, e to the negative 1 fourth x plus c. For this problem, we want the antiderivative of sine of 2x plus cosine of 2x. So we're just going to go term by term and take antiderivatives as we go. For this first one, uh, antiderivative of sine in general is negative cosine, but we have a linear function of 2x, so we're going to have to divide by the derivative of that. So that'll be negative 1 half cosine of 2x. Next, we've got antiderivative of cosine of 2x. Normally, that's going to be sine of 2x, but again, we have an inner function of 2x, linear function with a, a, a slope that's not 1. So we have to divide by that linear slope of 2. That'll be 1 half sine of 2x. And all of that plus C. So let's see, that's going to give us answer choice B. On this problem, we have 1 half times the antiderivative of e to the t over 2 dt. Uh, so let's take a look at the stuff inside here. Now, normally, the antiderivative of e 
to the, the something, e to the t would just be e to the t. But because we have a linear inner function here, we have to divide by the derivative of this t over 2, which is 1 half. If we're dividing by 1 half, we're actually multiplying by 2. So we're going to have the 1 half out here times 2 e to the t over 2. And then, of course, the 1 half and the 2 in here cancel. So we just have e to the t over 2 plus c, which gives uh, us answer choice c. On this problem, we want the antiderivative of 1 over 3x plus 12. Now, this is a 1 over x kind of situation. So we're definitely going to want to use ln of absolute value of something in order to get the antiderivative. Um, but the function down here is not just plain old x. This is 3x plus 12. So our next step we could do, maybe take the ln of absolute value of this stuff and divide it by that tail of 3. That doesn't look like any of the answer choices, though. If you look at the answer choices, they all have ln of x plus 4 inside. So we need an x plus 4 down here. How could we get that? If we factor a 3 out of this stuff, so we'll have 3 parentheses x plus 4, and then we move a 1 third outside the integral, which we're allowed to do because this is just a constant here. Um, now we could take the antiderivative of 1 over x plus 4, which is just going to be ln of absolute value of x plus 4. We'll have a 1 third out front, and of course we'll have the plus c over there. Um, so that's going to leave us with answer choice b. On this problem, we want the antiderivative of 6e to the 3x. So if you wrote 6e to the 3x, that's almost the antiderivative. But since you have this linear inner function, you have to divide by the derivative of that linear inner function. So that's going to be 6 over 3e to the 3x, which is 2e to the 3x plus c, which gives us answer choice A. On this problem, we want the antiderivative of 3x plus 1 quantity to the fifth. So if I just had x to the fifth, I would bump this up to a 6 and divide by 6. I can almost do that. But since I have a linear function inside here, I need to divide by the derivative of that linear function. So I'm going to have 3x plus 1 to the 6th all over 6 times, well, we're going to do a 1 third now, or divide by, one, divide by 3. So if I simplify this, I end up getting 3x plus 1 to the 6th over 18 plus c. And that gives me answer choice A. For this one, we're trying to take the antiderivative of this rational expression. Now, there aren't a whole lot of tricks we can use here. If you try factoring this thing up top, uh, you're going to realize there's nothing you can cancel with x minus 2. But we can divide the numerator by the denominator. And I'm just going to use a synthetic division on this. So let's go ahead and divide it. My coefficients, I've got 6, negative 4, negative 25. And then my box number here is going to be positive 2. So we bring down the 6 times 2 is 12, plus negative 4 is 8, times 2 is 16, plus negative 25 is negative 9. Uh, now let's write out the quotient here. So when I divide the numerator by the denominator, I end up with 6x plus 8 minus, this is going to be 9 over whatever you just divided by, which in this case is x minus 2. Uh, so this, I think, is the most straightforward way of doing this problem. There might be other ways, but this is how I did it. So let's go through now. And for this first one, I'll use my reverse power rule. So this is going to bump up to an x squared. Dividing by 2, we have 3x squared. Then this will just be 8x. And then finally, uh, this is going to be minus 9ln of x minus 2 in absolute value. And then, of course, the plus c at the end. So this is going to end up giving us, let's see here... Looks like choice A. On this problem, we're trying to take the antiderivative of these expressions here. So for the first one, we've got 5e to the 2x divided by the derivative of 2x, because this is a linear inner function here. So that'll be 5 halves e to the 2x. Next, we've got, uh, this is just actually ln of absolute value of x, if I take that antiderivative. And then don't forget the plus c. So let's see, that's going to match answer choice B. For number 17, we just want the antiderivative of cosine of 3x. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. Since we have a 3x inside, we have to divide by the tail of 3. So that's going to be 1 third sine of 3x plus c. 
which is going to be choice C. For number 16, we want the antiderivative of sine of 2x plus 3. Normally, the antiderivative of sine is just negative cosine of whatever's inside. Um, since we have a linear term inside, we can divide by the derivative of that, dividing by 2. So altogether, then, we've got negative 1 half cosine of 2x plus 3, all plus c. And that's going to be answer choice D.